So the, um, the webinar taking place today will be for the nursing bachelor at the Roselle campus in Sydney, and that's the accelerated degree. If we have any people here who are interested in studying nursing in Tasmania, we actually are running a separate webinar next week for those who have applied or who are looking at applying to these Tasmanian campuses. So if that is something that you would like to attend um, as well as the event today or instead of, um, please just pop your email addresses into the chat below. And if you could just pop it into the um, hosts and panelists, and we'll make sure that you get the link for the Tasmanian campus webinar taking place next week. Uh, and just to introduce myself, um, so my name is Ellen Gibson, for those of you who I may not have met. Um, I'm part of our future students team based in, at the Roselle campus in Sydney. And I've also got Liliana and Eva here, who are also part of the future students team here to answer any questions that anyone may have. Um, and some of you may have met us at expos and events, obviously pre-COVID earlier this year. Um, so yeah, it's really, really great to see so many faces here. I would just like to go through some housekeeping points as well before we start. Um, so we do have the Q&A uh, feature at the bottom, so you can add in questions kind of as we're going. We will try and answer some in the chat box where we can, but we will most likely just keep the Q&A um, function until the end of the session and we'll answer as many questions as we can and you can hear from both Sarah and Grace, our academics, and two of our student ambassadors. So just to skip forward, here's a lovely photograph of our Roselle campus, just so you can all get a sneak peek. Um, so yeah, just to introduce our speakers today, um, I'll let them all introduce themselves individually. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for joining us today, guys. So we've got Sarah, um, who's one of the lecturers in nursing, and we have Grace Bennett Daly, also another lecturer. And then we have two of our student ambassadors, Janelle and Jasmine, they're both first year students. Um, so thank you so much for all attending today. And if you could introduce yourselves um, and just say a few words, that would be fantastic. Thanks. OK, shall we go in order of what's on the slide? I'll, I'll go first. So hello, everyone. My name's Sarah Carasoni, and I'm one of the lecturers um, at Roselle. Um, I've been four years at the University of Tasmania now, so I'm, yeah, it's just flown by. Um, and it is a lovely campus. Um, my clinical background is actually in palliative care nursing, so I was a clinician before I moved into academia. I completed my PhD um, and I teach into the fast track, which is actually the course that's on offer at Roselle. Um, I also teach into the postgraduate space as well, and I do research, so uh, they keep us pretty busy, actually, um, as academics. Um, and I think that's all I really have to say about myself. Over to Grace. Thank you. Um, so my name's Grace. I've just recently moved back to New South Wales. So I was based in the Launceston campus. I've been working at UTAS for three and a half years. Um, my background in nursing is a little bit varied. I worked for five years um, in Burns at the Alfred Hospital in Melbourne. Um, and since then, I've worked in a number of Indigenous communities in the Northern Territory, WA, um, and most recently working at the John Hunter and Emergency. A little bit varied. Um, like Sarah, I will be teaching on the Roselle campus, um, so I hope to see you guys next year. Hi everyone, I'm Janelle. I'm a first year nursing student at the Roselle Sydney campus. Um, this is actually my second degree, so my first degree was in science, majoring in biology and ecology, and I decided after I think two years in environmental consulting to change to nursing, which is what I've always been interested in, but honestly a little bit scared of starting, but now I don't regret it at all. Been really enjoying the degree. Yeah. Hey everyone, I'm Jasmine. So I am, I'm a third year. Um, I'm in my, um, I'm about to enter my last trimester, which is very, very exciting. Um, I'm, I have a background in beauty and I worked quite a few years in retail as well. And I'm currently in AIN at the Children's Hospital at Westmead. 
Thanks so much, everyone. So we'll just move on to the um, beginning of the presentation here and I'll pass on to Sarah um, and she can speak a little bit more about the degree in detail. Um, and then Grace will go over some career opportunities and postgrad study after this. On to you, Sarah. What I might ask you to do is just go forward to the, the slide that says why nursing, because I think in a way, before we go on to the degree, it would be good to just sort of really talk a little bit about, yeah, what is nursing? And I guess uh, uh, you're all here for different reasons. You're all thinking about nursing for different reasons. Um, there's information that tells you that we are the largest health professional group in the world and what we actually do. But you know what, it's a really extraordinary time to be sort of considering undertaking a nursing career, albeit having to do your, your Bachelor of Nursing first off, you know, um, because of what's happening with uh, the pandemic and everything that's consumed us for the last 18 months. But 2020 was actually the International Year of the Nurse. And that's a, a sort of a designation that's come from the World Health Organization to recognize nursing for what it is, you know, they, they term it up as the dedication and sacrifice of nurses all over the world. So the, 2020 was dedicated to us, but because of what's gone on in the world, uh, it's been extended. So we now have the International Year of the Nurse for another year, 2021. So, you know, it's a, it's a great recognition of what nursing contributes um, in terms of healthcare. So you can see that, of course, we work closely with people, um, the healthy and people with, uh, you know, conditions, illnesses, diseases, as, as well as well people, you know, don't forget that we work with well people in very different capacities as well. And um, I would say that, uh, you know, there, is, there are many challenges and opportunities in all spheres, wherever there's people, you know, there's, a, there's this potential, for nurses as well so you know you'll find nurses at the bedside you'll find nurses in residential aged care facilities you'll find nurses in all sorts of services you'll find nurses in policy positions and even in politics i think there are there's at least one nurse in the house of representatives at the moment um, you'll find nurses in research as well so there's really a lot of opportunities uh, for nurses going forward. And as Grace said, and I was actually thinking of that, there's even a nurse uh, employed at the Opera House, nurses employed on film sets uh, and really just about everywhere in the Australian Defence Force, etc. So it's a, it's a great sort of career to be thinking about. And especially, you know, it's been highlighted, I guess, um, this year and, and last year because of, um, you know, the obvious thing. So very challenging for the last 18 months, but also it's really shown nurses, you know, how nurses have stood up in this crisis and what they really have to offer, um, you know, uh, the healthcare uh, setting and, and as a profession. So I, uh, I think, um, uh, what else did I really want to say about that? Um, yeah, really, I think, you know, nurses have, have just really shown, shown the way in terms of what they can contribute to healthcare this year. Okay, so, and as I say, you've probably all got your own reasons for considering it. And I just hope that I've shared with you a few other options for your consideration if you do decide to undertake nursing. Okay, Ellen, do you want to go back to the, the other slide? Okay, so our program uh, for next year does start. So we've, we've actually had a new Bachelor of Nursing program commence this year. And it's, it sort of runs in nursing study periods. So for, for, for anyone who's considering coming to Roselle, uh, you will actually be starting, um, I think it's the 17th of January next year, and you would enter into our nursing study period one. So there are three study periods and they, you know, will start quite early so that we can get through what we need to get through in a two year program. So, OK, it starts mid January. It is the accelerated courses. The other name for that is the fast track or you might think of it as an intensive program. Now, what that means is it's a 
fully accredited, uh, um, it's accredited by APRA, which is the governing and accreditation body, as a, you know, a, a, a proper, a fully endorsed, ready to go program, except that it takes place in two years instead of three. And what that means is you don't get as many holidays. So you really need to think about if this is something you wanna do in two years, as opposed to the more traditional model, which is a three year program. That said, having just listed all the possibilities and the opportunities when you actually do graduate, you might decide, yeah, that's the way I want to do it, get through the study and then get into, you know, my nursing career. But I did want to emphasize the fact that, you know, it's uh, intensive, it's fast track, it means that you will be working hard and you won't have as many holidays as perhaps some of your friends who are doing different degrees in different places. Um, Okay, and then the professional experience, or what we call here is the PEP, uh, is a, a mandatory component of your course, uh, and it's we are you are required to complete. I think it's 800 hours over the course of the program, which is equivalent to you know other programs that may be a three-year program. So we also are responsible for you make you know getting through that um, 800 hours of professional experience or clinical placement. Uh, and that doesn't happen in nursing study period one, of course, uh, but a little bit later in uh, your first year of the program. Okay. Okay, what can I study? Okay, so um, I think this is really pretty much uh, a repeat of, um, you know, the actual content of the program you can and will study the two-year fast track at Roselle. Um, there are, I'm not going to go into the technicalities of different pathways, but the program is what it is at Roselle. And there are a few variables. So, um, you know, and that's for a, a discussion later if uh, you decide that you do want to come and study here. Um, what else that I can tell you about this Roselle? What I would like to say is Roselle also it is, it is a small campus, but it's a lovely small campus and a fully formed campus. And our program is also fully formed. We have a great simulation, uh, new simulation uh, laboratory, uh, two of them actually, two quite large labs over at Roselle, as well as a myriad other student spaces as well. Um, yeah. I think move on to the next slide, please, Ellen. And why study nursing with us? Okay, well, again, a little bit of what I've said already is that, you know, the campus itself. Um, so I suppose another way to frame this too is at the campus at Roselle, there, there are nursing students and we share, of course, with the paramed students. So in total, there are several hundred students across the two programs, the two main programs, sitting within the School of Nursing and the School of Health Science, which is the, the paramedics. Um, and so one of the nice things about studying with us at UTAS at the Roselle campus is that, you know, small and fully formed, there are a couple of hundred students as opposed to thousands of students, I think you might find yourself. <laughs> Uh, with at other universities and the, the, the size I think is one of the, the nice things about Roselle. Certainly the labs are purpose built and they're new um, and so I'm very confident that you're, you, if you decide to come you're, you're, le you're learning in very good simulation environments. And we certainly do within our new BN present you with lots of uh, learning scenarios because you know, your learning experiences are pivotal to your qualification at the end and ultimately your registration. Um, we have very strong partnerships with uh, our uh, industry partners, as we would say, that will enable you to undertake the various placements, whether it be at a hospital, whether it's at an aged care facility or another site in the community. So they are well and truly established and we have a very hard working uh, PEP team and uh, they've done a fantastic job actually in the last 18 months trying to negotiate you know, clinical placements in a pandemic environment. 
and maybe the um, student ambassadors might be able to speak a little bit more to that when we get to them. And the fact that we've just actually undertaken a new uh, Bachelor of Nursing and, and it's the first rollout this year or the first iteration, I can assure you that we've got a really great um, curriculum. It's evidence-based, it's contemporary, you know, it's underpinned with um, very um, experienced, you know, clinical knowledge and research as well to make sure that we've got a very good fit for purpose curriculum to make sure you get good learning and teaching on the academic side. And then of course you've got your clinical placement as well. Was there anything else that I needed to say? Um, was that over to Grace? Yeah, yeah. it's over to me. <laughs> Okay, so um, I want to talk to you about different career opportunities and I say there's a few um, messages in the chat about that so we can talk about that. Um, so obviously when you undertake the two year degree you become a registered nurse. Um, so essentially this means that you can work in most parts of the hospital and you don't need additional training or support. Some graduate positions um, in the emergency department or ICU will require that um, you do additional training before you can work in those facilities, whereas some hospitals are happy to have graduate nurses um, in those roles also. Um, so there's lots of different areas you can work in. Um, I'm an example of that. When I actually started studying nursing, I decided that I didn't want to be a nurse, but I'm really glad that I pursued with the degree. Um, I've worked in emergency, surgical, medical, paediatrics, ICU. Um, I've worked in all states in Australia, except for Queensland and South Australia. Um, so it's really something, it's a really diverse um, career. You can start in one area and if you decide that you don't like it, you can move somewhere else. And that's one of the great things about nursing is that there is flexibility in terms of where you can work and where you can, in terms of geographical location as well as specialty. Um, so there are a list of different things that you can, um, career opportunities. There are also other things if you start to think outside the box. So we've got community nursing. Um, when you're not in a hospital, there's aged care facilities. You can get into education like I did in a hospital context and now I'm working in academia. You can become a research nurse. Um, there's so many different avenues you can go down. So I am really thankful that I stuck with the degree. Um, I think it was the best career choice I've ever made. Um, there are postgraduate degrees that we offer. Um, one of the questions in the chat was around remote area nursing. We don't actually have um, a program for, which focuses on remote area nursing at the moment, but there are definitely ways that um, you can get involved in it. Um, there are lots of graduate positions available, especially in WA, that you can travel around the state um, and they place you for three months in different locations. So there's lots of scope for that. Um, I think that's sort of everything I wanted to speak about in regards to career opportunities. Don't mind going to the next slide, please. Oh, I thought there was two slides. I must have fed through it. There oh, you go. Career Sorry. outcomes. <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, so I think that our degree really prepares you well for real life um, and obviously for your career as a nurse. Um, I like to think about nursing as though you're a detective. Um, you're trying, you get a patient and you're trying to find out what's wrong with it. Um, so it really helps develop those, um, those skills in terms of problem solving. Um, you learn how to work independently and as a team, and that's really important with nursing because you obviously work as a team of nurses um, and you also work with allied health members, you work with medical professionals and so forth. So we try to really build those skills throughout the degree. Um, critical thinking, judgment and decision-making is really important. And I think a really other really important um, attribute of our graduates is that they have this thirst for knowledge. We hope they do, because as you know, healthcare is always evolving. So we want them to always want to learn because that's what makes a really good clinician. Um, but yeah, we try to produce um, graduates that are confident and competent and that can work anywhere, not just within Sydney or Tasmania, but any healthcare facility. 
Um, but I think that's about all I had at this point to say. Thanks very much, Grace. I'll, um, I'll just move on to speak a little bit about the applications and how that obviously works um, with us at UTAS. So for our year 12 students that are here today, you can actually apply directly through our website um, and you can apply through the school's recommendation programme. Um, and what that does is it's basically the opportunity for you to get an early offer to this programme. Um, and this basically is done through your school. We get a recommendation from your school once you have completed your application. Um, and then you could be, if you were to apply now, you could potentially be eligible for an early offer um, at the beginning, at the 8th, 8th of October, sorry. Um, and for non-year 12 applicants, so we do have two rounds for applications this year. Um, the closing date that's coming up will be the 30th of September and we really do advise that everyone gets their applications in as soon as possible. We, we do have a second closing date of the 30th of November um, but this will be obviously limited spaces following the 30th of September so if you're really interested please just get your applications in as soon as possible. And it's a really easy process directly through the website and it's completely free as well. Um, so if anyone has questions about applications, obviously please feel free to pop them in the Q&A. Um, and yeah, we're more than happy to answer that. So thank you so much, Grace and Sarah. That was really, um, really helpful. And we're just gonna um, jump to the Q&A now. I think we've got quite a few questions to answer. So we will answer those for everybody. So a few of the, one of the most popular questions that we've got here is what is the ATAR for nursing? So for students who are applying, um, obviously who aren't applying through the school's recommendation program, the, um, the ATAR is actually for 65, is 65. Um, so just moving on to the next question, does, so this is from um, Sunny, thanks Sunny for your question, um, uh, perhaps Sarah or Grace can answer this one, so does the uni provide webinar or help sessions for assignments to help students complete their assignments? Well, certainly, uh, Sunny, there's a lot of um, support to support students learning throughout the whole programme. Um, actually, at Roselle, uh, we have a student learning advisor Anne, who um, helps uh, students across the university, not just at Roselle. But then there's, there's a lot of online support, lots of resources. Um, you mentioned a webinar. Is there a webinar? Uh, there probably are lots of webinars that you can dip in and out uh, of. Um, there's a um, Studiosity as well, which is a 24 hour help uh, support for students, helping them with assignment writing, etc. So there's a lot of support uh, for learning and teaching. Yes. Thanks for that, Sarah. And this is the next question from Supreet. Um, are the majority of lectures online or on campus considering the situation um, at the moment? Perhaps Jan Janelle and Jasmine can maybe give, give a bit of an insight as to how um, studies has been for them this year. Um, so I uh, last year, I actually started my degree last year, so at the peak of COVID as well. So it is mostly mixed. Um, mixed method of learning so we do a lot of online content a, a lot of online um, lectures um, and uh, there's about three or depending on um, what nursing period you're in um, two or three weeks where you're going to campus and you learn your practical skills so I find that's really nice just a kind of a nice balance you get to see all your friends <laughs> yeah. yeah I might jump in and just add to that so um that's great. So I think you've um, provided some really good insight into what it's like. Um, our structure at the moment is that we have usually three intensive per nursing period. 
Um, and that's when you come in and you do your face-to-face -face clinical practice, as Jasmine said. Um, COVID has unfortunately interrupted us a little bit in this last nursing period of the year, um, where the students are only gonna be able to come in once, um, but we're providing additional support online um, and so forth, so. Fantastic, thank you, Grace. Um, Actually, can I, can I just yeah. add to that? So I should have said it earlier. Um, with the new BN that we offer now, um, there is um, a reasonable amount of online learning. Uh, so we have the online learning, and often this is learning that you're required to do at your own pace. It's self-directed, uh, and you do it in preparation to coming into the intensive um, simulations or whatever it happens to be, the face-to-face -face component. So each unit will have uh, its online component, which you will be doing off campus in your own time to fit in around your other um, requirements and your other responsibilities. And then there are, uh, you know, throughout, as I say, the, the semester, the nursing study period, blocks of intensives as well. And that will be usually for each unit, you will have to come in and do um, sometimes um, a couple of days uh, or, or, you know, over the course of the unit, maybe it's a couple of weeks that you will actually be required to be on campus. Of course, you're welcome to come in to campus at any, any time, not under the current circumstances, but in usual circumstances, the campus is yours and you can come in as you like. Thank you, Sarah. So just moving on to the next question. Um, so how many offers is there? So what is the, you know, the, the quota, I suppose, for the offer at the Sydney campus? Um, so I believe, I'm not sure, Sarah, you might know the total number um, of the nurses. I believe it's around the 250 mark. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how many students we usually accept for the first year. Um, so thank you for that question. Excellent. And um, just another one to go through. So what is the easiest way to become a nurse? And do you need a high ATAR? So just to kind of reiterate the question that we answered before. Um, so the ATAR that we've we obviously require is a 65. Um, the easiest way is simply just to apply through the website. Um, and basically just go from there, apply to us and see what happens. And obviously, get your applications in as soon as possible. Um, and another person has also asked, what about if we don't get the ATAR of nursing? Is there any way to study nursing without an ATAR? Um, so I can probably answer that one myself, perhaps um, Sarah or Grace, you can jump in afterwards, but we do actually offer a pathway program, um, which is the Diploma of University Studies. So this is a one year program that you can apply for in exactly the same way as the Bachelor of Nursing. You just need to add it as a preference to your application and you just need to select the Diploma of University Studies Nursing Pathway. And that will just be a one year program that you can complete. Um, and that will be a pathway into the um, Bachelor of Nursing. We've had lots of students go through that pathway. So it's a really effective pathway if you don't make that ATAR. Thanks, Grace. And this is a question that's just come through from Susanna. So it's kind of similar to what we've asked about studying on campus, but roughly how many days per week on campus and approximately how many hours of additional study are required outside of university? Do you want to answer that one, Sarah? <laughs> yeah, go for it. I think you're on mute. <laughs> Did you want to answer that, did you say? No, I said, could you answer oh. that one? <laughs> oh, right. Um, well, I think, so what I was saying before, with the new BN, we the way that the uh, programme is structured now, is that you are required to come on campus. So I'm just thinking about the unit that I was doing in nursing study period one, which was the older person unit. So that actually takes place in nursing study period one in your second year. And the first three weeks was basically online study, as I was saying before. So you were sort of looking at, at modules that we created and uh, working through uh, the modules and the various uh, activities online. And then I think you were required to come on campus 
And so, of course, it's a programme that goes across the whole university. But for the Roselle students, I think you were on campus from about week four or week five. Um, uh, and uh, you were um, obviously, you know, to get all the students through. So you were on May on campus for for that one unit, maybe for a couple of days. But then, of course, you we make the most of you coming on campus. So you'll be also doing your intensives for the other some of your other subjects as well. So from memory, you are probably in for, say, two weeks, um, you know, for a period. So you might have three weeks uh, where you're doing online and then you would come in for, for a couple of weeks. Then you do some more online and then you would come back for your second intensive. So in that particular unit, there were two intensives and you had, um, you know, a couple of uh, a couple of weeks for each intensive. And then, of course, you have your PEP as well. So don't forget you've got your clinical placement that you're also trying to do as well. But re realistically, I, I think I'm just trying to remember if it's 20 hours. I think it's a minimum of 20 hours a week that you are expected to study um, online for your um, for, for each unit. Please jump in, Grace. It's, it's 10 hours. Yeah. I'm, I'm saying double. Okay. So that does equate to a full time job if you're, um, if it, you're it, it, enrolled in four units. Absolutely so right. It's very busy. And that's per unit as well. Yeah. Okay. 10 hours per unit. And you, in a normal program, you've got four units that you're doing mm -hmm. per nursing study period. You're Jasmine busy. and Janelle, does that, do you think that? correctly quantifies how much time you spend. Some students spend less and some students spend a lot more. So, yeah. I think it is pretty accurate. It does depend, as you said, Grace, how quickly you learn and you study. But if you would like to get the most out of your content, it you do need to put in the hours and the effort and juggling, say, if you do need to work or if you have a life, <laughs> um, then yeah, you do have to be quite organized in that aspect, but it is convenient that it is online and it's self-directed. So you can choose when to jump in and what points to jump in as well. So, yeah. Thanks all. Yeah. Oh, Jasmine, did you just want to say a little? Yeah, I was going to say, um, I think at the beginning of your degree, you're going to find that you're spending maybe a little bit more than 40 hours, but once you start learning your kind of your study, Kind of patterns and the in the best way to study for yourself then that definitely um, decreases as you go on thanks jasmine that's great and then um, we're just going to address a few questions here because i know that we do have quite a few students here obviously based in new south wales um who are obviously asking the questions about the hsc the fact that the hsc exams have been pushed back and the um, release date of the atar is now supposedly proposed to be the, about the 20th of January. So how is that obviously gonna fit with the start date of the 17th of Jan? Um, just to let all those students know that you obviously you don't need to worry at this stage. Um, we are working with um, the Department of Education on this and we are, and our admissions team are working really hard to um, kind of figure this out for all of these students. So we will be getting in touch with you in the meantime to kind of let you know um, how this is gonna work obviously come January, but please don't worry about it at this stage. Um, it is something that we are working really hard to kind of give you a solution for. Um, but thank you so much for asking those questions as well, because I know it's on a lot of people's um, minds at the moment as well. Um, so yeah, just moving on to this next question. Um, so for current students, thanks for this question, Chase, by the way. Um, how are you finding the workload of an accelerated course compared to a regular degree? I'll jump in for this one. I don't know if Jasmine, if you want to say anything. Um, because I did do uh, an undergraduate degree beforehand, um, in terms of workload, I would actually say it's about the same, but that's because I did a science degree, which had a lot of hours and a lot of classes in general. So it honestly would be pretty comparable. Um, the only difference, of course, would be that we have placements um, and you don't do any classes during these placements, but there would be assignments due as well. So you have to keep on top of that. Um, 
and in terms of how many assignments you get it'd be about the same except it was also a compressed degree so when I did my first undergraduate we were in semesters and it was generally more spread out across 13 weeks but because at UTAS it's three terms per year and it is a bit of a longer year as well um, everything does seem a bit more fast paced but in terms of actual work it I felt it was about the same. Um, I did a degree, uh, I didn't finish it, but back when I finished high school, um, I found, personally, I found it can be quite intense doing an accelerated course of just the reality of it. But I think just mentally, you have to prepare yourself that, you know, this is um, what, you know, this is what you want to do. And yeah, just mentally prepare yourself for that as well. Thanks, Jasmine. That's really great. And thanks, Janelle. Really, really helpful to hear from you both. Um, so another question here from Danielle. Um, so which hospitals can we expect to do placements at and do students find placements themselves? Um, so I can start answering this one. So no, we have um, a PEP team in Sydney and a PEP team in Tasmania, and they organise all of your placements for you so you don't have to um, find them yourself. Um, we have placements everywhere um, from aged care facilities to some of the large tertiary hospitals um, to community nursing um, and so forth. So they're quite varied in terms of what's on offer. Sarah, I don't know if you want to jump in and say anything else. Excellent. Thanks, Grace. So one of the other questions we have here from Narelle, um, thanks so much, Narelle. She says, my main question is the current impact on travel restrictions with border closures, etc. What happens if students cannot get into New South Wales? Are there backup contingencies if there is restriction still? Um, I'm not sure if that's any, something you you can I can sort that. of answer some of yeah. that if you'd like. That would be um, great. So we obviously try and be as supportive as we can and we understand that the COVID situation is out of your hands. Um, there are some units um, that are just run online, so there's no issues in regards to that. However, there are what we call our nursing practice units and they're the units that sit alongside the placement. And to be eligible to go out on placement, you need to um, fulfil some face-to-face -face attendance requirements. So there are some restrictions in place if you cannot come. Um, but we do have um, Mark, who's our course coordinator, and he tries to help facilitate that with you as best as possible. And also, if need be, put alternative pathways in place, which Sarah was talking about a little bit earlier. Um, but unfortunately, because it is a practice um, degree and we need to make sure you're clinically competent, competent to go out on placement, we as teaching staff need to um, make sure that you are safe for practice. And the other thing I might just add to that, because, you know, of course, the reason we're having this conversation is because of what's happening with coronavirus. Um, whilst it's not mandatory at the moment, you, you, you really, um, if you haven't thought about it already, you probably need to start thinking about vaccination because we know that the health authorities now will be requiring mandatory vaccinations moving forward. So the university, some I think have already perhaps um, started asking for this, uh, but I, I think, you know, if you haven't given it any thought, then you will, obviously, if you're going into nursing uh, and that's a requirement, you need to think about that as well. Fantastic, thank you. And just another placement um, related question. We've got quite a few questions coming in about placements, but still it's really just good to know. Um, so this is from Atti, who's just asking, they just want to know how many placement locations are decided for students. Um, so obviously that is done through the PEP team, but is our placements only held at hospitals and nursing homes? So um, the placement locations are generally decided upon where you reside and they try and um, match you somewhere that's um, close and fairly convenient. I do understand that you can put in preferences. Sarah, is that still the case? Uh, yes, that, that's my understanding. Look, you know, it's a really a changing, mm. <laughs> a changing situation. But yes, you could uh, make preferences. And I know the PEP team uh, here in Sydney and, of course, over in Tassie as well, will always do their best to try and match preferences where possible. 
And so Jasmine and Janelle, maybe you can speak to that as well. Did you, you know, did you get what you want? Did you put in preferences and, and did you get those? Um, so with, because of COVID, there has been a little bit of a mix up with placement. Um, not a mix up, but it's just been a little bit harder for us to go on placements, especially with the vaccinations. But um, so with me, I, I think I've put in one time as a preference for Justice Health. And I got that preference. So yeah, there's a lot of, it's not just hospitals and nursing homes. There's well, so, mu so much choice. Um, for me, I've only done the one placement and my preference was to go into something surgical related. Um, but in first year, first placement, they're not going to put you in theatre straight away. So I think, I don't know if it was actually taken into consideration. It might have been because I was put into a surgical ward, which I felt was pretty close and I had a great time anyway. Um, yeah, yeah, so I think that they do try their best, but with COVID, the uh, placement rounds, the dates have been shuffled a little and um, the team have tried their best to put students as close as possible. Excellent, thank you. Um, and just another one to add to that both, that's okay. Um, and the minimum hours for the placements per day, um, we're kind of looking at kind of a standard working day, but obviously it just depends obviously where your placement is, I imagine. Um, maybe one of you can just shed a bit more light for that one. Yeah, so the standard um, day is eight hours. However, some facilities do have 12-hour shifts. So um, you might be placed in 12-hour shifts too. Um, when I was a student but I studied through La Trobe, I also had to do night duty, but I don't believe that UTAS students do, which is great. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. And um, just to move on, so I'm just going through some of these questions here, quite a lot of questions coming in, which is really good. So this is another question from Chase, um, who's asking, what kind of things can we expect from the hands-on aspect of the course? And what are some of the things that are involved, covered um, while you're on campus? Um, so I work in a, a lot of the nursing practice units, so I'll answer that one. Um, so we do a lot of simulation-based learning and case-based learning. Um, as you would have seen in the pictures, we have mannequins um, and you can test their blood pressure, their heart rate. They can vomit, even though they don't vomit, you can just hear the vomit, they can cough. Um, so we try to make it as real life as possible. Um, and you'll also learn different clinical skills. So from taking vital signs to administering medication to putting in a nasogastric tube, um, lots of other things. I don't know, Jasmine or Janelle, do you have anything that was a highlight that you really enjoyed learning or a particular clinical skill? I'm just trying to think back now. <laughs> um, I just um, I just did my basic life support, so I renewed my certificate. So that's that, that's fresh in my mind. That's always fun to do. Um, I believe we did an OSCE on that, so a practical um, assessment on that too. So uh, yeah, I just find all the practical components really fun when we come into campus. <laughs> yeah, I was recently assessed on uh, wound management. And we did medication administration, CPR, things like that. And I really enjoyed it because there's not really any other way that you could practice these things. And the facilities on the Roselle campus are beautiful and new and very realistic. So yeah, that's what I really like, actually using the equipment and everything. I actually just remembered when you said uh, medication administration, when we learned how to do um, IV. That was really fun because when as soon as I got into my placement, I knew exactly what to do. So IV means intravenous. That's when we inject a medication into the vein. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that, Grace. That's really helpful from both of you. We're just going to go through some of these last questions um, before the end of the session. Um, so this is just coming from Piper. Um, potentially... Sarah or Grace, you can answer this one. So Piper is currently a second year nursing student at the University of Notre Dame, and she's wanting to transfer her degree um, as the degree has been pushed back to four years. When would she know um, if credit can be transferred over? Well, um, actually, we have a few students over the, the years that I've been here who've transferred across from different universities. 
how quickly that credit uh, look it's a fairly quick process I mean I from from memory students were sort of already uh, engaged in their uh, units and just waiting to hear you know whether or not they had to attend a class for another unit it's usually within the first couple of weeks it, it gets sorted pretty quickly that was my experience with the students that uh, I know were coming through in the last couple of years whether anything's changed because of covid um I yeah I don't know sorry I can't I can't guess at it but you know previously it does it's not a long process Excellent, thank you. And this is just coming from Laura, who's actually asking about the Diploma of University Studies, so the Nursing Foundation. Um, so potentially, maybe Grace, you can give a bit of an insight for that one, if you know. Oh, I don't know much about the Diploma of University oh, that's Studies. Okay. I don't know if Sarah does. <laughs> well, I can say that, um, so uh, Diploma of University uh, Students, will sit in some of the more, if you like, some of the more generic or non-practice courses to start with. So because we don't assume that you've got, you know, a pathophysiology knowledge base, uh, depending on when they come in to the programme. So I've taught students in the older person um, unit. So if they were coming in the second year, but they might not have been doing one of the, the sort of um, adjacent nursing practice units. So uh, obviously you build up to doing that. So you have to pass, if you like, some of the, uh, the non-practice units first, and then you begin to enter into the Bachelor of Nursing degree. So some of those other subjects might be around um, the communication um, units, um, we have um, the First Nations unit, that type of thing that, that you would find yourself in. Uh, if you do well in those, then I think uh, my understanding is you can then um, qualify for the Bachelor of Nursing. Excellent, thank you. And this is just a question come in from Supreet. Um, so obviously with the application process this year, um, students have to provide English language requirements. Um, and do we know if they have to provide English language evidence again when they register with APRA? I'm not sure. I, I don't know the answer to that one. I don't know if Sarah does. Well, Again, yes, that's right. So there's a new requirement around the aisles actually to enter into the, uh, the course. Uh, of course, you, you would know that. And um, uh, I, I don't know 100% if you still need to show that at the end of your course and, and as you register. Um, I guess we need to find that out, Ellen, and would we be able to maybe give that information? Yeah, to absolutely. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll take your details. Um, for the person who answered that question and yeah we'll um we'll definitely get back to you and let you know in a bit more detail if that's okay and um, so thank you so much for that anyway sarah and um, so just to move on guys we're just going to look at a couple more quick questions and um, so we've got a few questions here about um actually com when completing the application and um, so through the online um system that we obviously use um so can any diploma certificates from overseas be accepted when when applying? Um, I I believe it depends on the um, obviously the type of diploma certificate. Um, that really obviously just depends. I would say any current evidence that you have to support your application, always just provide as much information as you can, um, and we'll provide provide a formal assessment. You know, as we kind of look. At your application obviously each application is assessed individually so yeah definitely just um, provide as much information as you can um, and we'll look at it um, obviously when we come to look at your application and um, so this is a great question from Atty if um, students have been if people have been out of high school for a while are there any extra things that they can include in their application to make them stand out more Anything that you, anyone would say, makes you stand out more as a, as a student? 
I don't, I'm not involved in the application process, so I don't really know. I feel like that's done at the college level. Yeah, um, look, I, I would I would say anything that you've done, you know, whether it's volunteering, uh, everything counts in life. You know, all your experiences, you know, that you, you've, you um, you know, certainly um, if you've just done casual work uh, for a short period, perhaps it's not worth mentioning. But if if you've got some sort of accumulation of experience, um, I think it's definitely worth uh, putting in your application and certainly, um, you know, anything that's a volunteering role would potentially uh, look very good on the resume. I mean, what, what we want to see is that you, you know, there's some sort of level of productivity, um, you know, aside from qualifications, I think uh, this would be looked at. Uh, obviously it's a competitive process, but I think anything that you can put down there that's, you know, is of value, then put it down. And can I, sorry, I was just about to put in the chat, I've just been looking at the APRA site and I will put it in the chat. Yes, all uh, professions, um, health professions, including nursing, of course, um, have a registration standard for English language skills. So I'll put that in and you can explore that. Um, Thanks very much for that, Sarah. That's okay. really helpful. So we've just got a couple of questions coming in about um, obviously completing this degree in a non-accelerated way. Um, so the Bachelor of Nursing kind of standard three years is available at the um, at the Hobart campus in Tasmania. Um, so that's something that you can apply for if it's, you know, you maybe thinking that the two year accelerated degree at Roselle maybe isn't for you. And then you could obviously apply for the Bachelor of Nursing at Hobart um, and just select the preference for the standard degree. Um, and the only thing is with that degree is that offers will be released um, a little bit later for year 12 students. So that for year 12 students, they'll be released um, obviously once your ATAR comes out and then for um, non-year 12 students they'll be released in line with um, other non-year 12 offers in October. So thank you very much for asking that question. All right Ellen can I jump in there? Yeah um, of course. Um, anyone uh, feel free to jump in and correct me if this is completely wrong but I know people at the Sydney campus who are doing the degree part-time so it is the accelerated degree but it's part-time and it's over four years so if you wanted to stay in Sydney it is a possibility and I do have friends who are doing the same degree but over three years as well due to their own personal circumstances or it be family medical so it is still possible um, just depends on how you want to organize it yourself. Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much for that, Janelle. It's really, um, really interesting to hear. Obviously, it depends on um, people's personal circumstances. So definitely, it's something that we can potentially look into for you. And there is the option, obviously, to do it part time instead. And um, so we've just got a question into the chat box about the recording. So what I will do is I'll, I'll send um, an email address to all of our people who have registered for the event and we'll send you the recording in an email tomorrow. So you can access it then for anyone who wants to look back or wants to share it with friends um, or colleagues and everything like that, then you can do that. That's absolutely fine. And I'll just run through the last couple of questions just before we finish. Um, thank you so much for all the fantastic questions. It's really, really nice to see so many people um, interested. So we've got a question um, here. It is, um, this is a question from Mina. Um, so she's actually hoping to go into cos cosmetic injectables um, and will she need to do additional years um, if that's kind of the, the field that she wants to go into? Um, I know that there are some, or maybe Jasmine can answer this better, but I know that there are some postgrad degrees you can do in injectables, but also some um, organisations um, will actually train you on the job to do it. Um, Jasmine, I don't know if you can put in a little bit more about that. Yeah, um, I just, I know quite a few cosmetic uh, injectors that were, that um, graduated from UTAT. They did have to do a postgraduate um kind of just it's not a degree more so a certification um but they also find it's it's good for them uh good for you to work on the, the ward as well as well to get that kind of patient interaction as well so it's really up to you but you do need a certification for it 
Fantastic. Thank you both for that. And another question here from Sunny. Um, so do students get their AIN certificate when they're in their second year of um, like in the last year of the accelerated degree or is it after that? Um, so there's no physical kind of certificate, but if on your resume, you can just list down um, all of your placements and uh, most uh, positions will say, if it's an AIN, they will ask for an undergraduate bachelor degrees. So generally in your second year, you can just pop all your placement experience and they'll have a look at that. That's great. Thank you very much, Jasmine. And so a couple of other questions here we'll just answer about early offers. Um, so how do students get early offers? So, so this is from Neelam. What can I do to get early offers from my side and what delays um, potentially getting an offer? So if you are a year 12 student, then you can get an early offer as part of the school's recommendation programme. Um, so if, you're, if you are applying, you're a year 12 student, then you would apply through the school's recommendation programme um, through the application portal and obviously we have to get a recommendation from your school and then um, that can obviously sometimes take a couple of weeks when we get the recommendation from the school and then offers are released in rounds for that process. Um, obviously non-year 12 applicants then, then you need to apply by the 30th of September if you're really keen and want to get your offer as soon as possible obviously have your application in by the deadline um, if not before um, just to kind of make that process a little bit easier um, obviously there is eventually going to be, there will be limited spots um, as we mentioned there's 250 places so we kind of want to be fill that 250 obviously after that there isn't any more places so definitely get your applications in as soon as possible and i'll just do one last question before the end i know there's so many questions here thank you so much everybody um so this has just come in from isabel when life is back to normal post covid is the accelerated degree online still or will it change to more campus-based study so it's still the same structure. So we have a lot of online and then we have three intensives per nursing period um, where you come in usually for about two, two and a half days. That's great. Thank you so much, Grace. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for attending. We are actually out of time now. Um, we do have a few, just a couple of unanswered questions. Um, and what we'll do is we'll send you a document of frequently asked questions um, along with the recording of the webinar. So you can look back at the webinar um, and also look at the frequently asked questions if you didn't get your question answered today. Um, but thank you so much for everyone for attending. And also thank you to our wonderful speakers um, for all their help as well. Thank you. Very welcome. Thanks, everyone. All the best, everyone. Bye. Thanks.